Hi everyone, Becky here and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sewing up the bum bag from Little Wind Kids. Now this is a fanny pack, belt bag, um, style bag and it does have a buckle on it and a zipper. So I'm going to be walking you through all of these steps of sewing up this bag from start to finish. This bag comes in all different sizes from a toddler all the way up to an adult extra large I believe is the size range um, but no matter the size you are using it doesn't affect anything besides the size of your pieces. If you have not purchased this pattern yet I will put a link down in the description below so you can check it out again it is through Loneland Kids and um, it is a great pattern it is relatively simple if you kind of know what you're doing which is why I'm putting this video together to help you through those steps and while making the video there was a couple of things that I touched on and I just wanted to touch on them here at the beginning before you get into it so you kind of have these ideas in your head before getting started so the first thing is is change your needle on your machine use a universal needle or a heavy duty needle I'm actually going to be using a denim needle. Um, it's just extra sharp, extra heavy duty because some of these seams do get really thick, especially when you are applying the binding. Um, it just makes it easier to sew through and a less likely chance of bending or breaking a needle. With this pattern, you will need a zipper. Your zipper can be too long. It will be, you can shorten it, which is what I end up doing in this video. Um, but if it is too short, you won't be able to use it because otherwise your opening is going to be too small for your bag. So just make sure that your zipper is at least the length um, required for the size that you are making. Another thing with zippers, if you are using a plastic zipper, one with plastic teeth, you just want to be cautious when you are ironing because you do not want to put too much heat on those teeth or there is a possibility that they could melt and it could ruin your project. Um, we are putting the zipper in, you're pressing and top stitching. So you just want to be extra cautious when you are pressing around your zipper. Now metal zipper, um, it won't really cause any issues there. And while we were talking about pressing, I want you to press your fabric before you cut it. Now I did not do this, I was being lazy, I didn't feel like it and um it just makes it harder when you cut out your pieces they don't lay flat you're not going to cut everything straight your pieces probably won't end up the exact size that you need um and i did end up pressing them after i cut them and then recut them out with the correct borders because they were all wonky and lopsided so do as i say not as i do and press your fabric before cutting it out this is a woven pattern, which meaning your fabric cannot have stretched. Now, if you do have a knit fabric that you want to use, that is fine. You can do that. Um, just make sure you put your interfacing on those knit pieces so that they do not stretch. And along with the interfacing, if you are using a pressed inter press and interfacing with the adhesive on it and you iron it on, I highly recommend cutting out the seam allowance. So your pieces of interfacing will be about a fourth an inch smaller than your body pieces. And that is just to reduce bulk in the seam allowance. Um, like I said at the beginning with the needles, they get really thick and bulky in some spots and that just helps reduce the bulk. Now if you're using a knit fabric or a sew-in interfacing, you cannot do that. You need to make it the full size. But if you are using one with an adhesive on it, then go ahead and cut out that seam allowance. And the last thing I want to note before getting started is for the binding. If you are using store-bought binding, you want to use a double fold bias tape. Um, that just is the type of fold that you need to sew it on very nicely. I'm going to be walking you through steps of how to do it a little bit differently than a tutorial that typically gives you a better result. Um, so double fold bias tape or you can make your own but you do want to use a bias tape. Um, in the tutorial they used a twill tape which you can use that. You can use something that is not on the bias but we are doing corners and the bias tape gives the binding a little bit of stretch which is going to make it lay nicer around those curves. So I just recommend making sure that you're using something from the bias to 
find your pieces. You can also use knit um, and just stretch it a little bit slightly. There's nothing wrong with that. You can get the same results with the knit. So I know that was a lot of information, but now let's go ahead and get to the good stuff and get sewing our bum bag. So before we get started, I'm just going to talk about the pieces that we have um, for your um, front, back, top, and bottom. You're going to have one main, one lining, and one piece of interfacing of each one. Um, I will say for my interfacing, I like to cut it out um, minus the seam allowance. It just reduces the bulk in your seam allowance. Now if you're doing sew-in, you can't do that. But since this is iron-on, um, I just like to cut it out to reduce the bulk. So I did that on all my pieces. And then my side pieces, you just have your main. Um, and as you can see, the main is my striped fabric. And then also for the hardware, I have my buckle, my sliders, my webbing. And my zipper. Now these I all purchased at Joann's. The zipper I already had on hand. Um, so this is just the webbing. I'm doing a one inch webbing so I got the straps. And so you can get it all at Joann's. They don't have a great selection. Um, I believe they only had white and black of the clips and sliders. So it does kind of limit you there. But if you're looking for a quick place to grab your supplies, you can get it at Joann's. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to take all of our main pieces that need interfacing and just going to flip them over to the wrong side and press our interfacing on to all of those. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of these pieces over to my iron and press these on. And I will say if you are pressing on your interfacing um, make sure you are not using steam. Steam will affect how it attaches and potentially cause bubbles and make it not stick as well. So just make sure if you have an iron or steam on it, you turn your steam off before applying your interfacing. And I got my interfacing applied to all of my main pieces. So we're just going to set everything aside for right now besides our front body pieces. And so once we put everything else aside, we are just going to put it because on our main pieces. So your front, or your sorry, your front pieces. So I'm going to take my front main piece and my zipper, and when the right side of the fabric is the side with the pool on it. And what you're going to do is you're going to just flip it over and line up the edge of your zipper tape with the edge of your main fabric on the right side of your main fabric and line that up and as you can tell my zipper is longer than my pattern piece which is perfectly fine as long as it is longer than your pattern piece you can always shorten a zipper um, if it's shorter then you may run into issues and because it is longer I'm going to just go ahead and unzip it so that I don't have to worry about the zipper pull getting in the way when I sew. Then I'm just going to take my lining piece and lay it with my right sides together on top, lining up the raw edges and just adding it in to my clips here. And then I'm just going to take this over to my sewing machine with a zipper foot and sew along this top edge here. Now if you are concerned about zippers or you're just worried about how it's going to turn out, go ahead and baste it on first and then flip it over and see how it looks. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. You just don't want it to go right up next to the teeth otherwise your pool is going to get stuck. And if you are sewing with your pool, what you would do is you would sew to about here, lift your presser foot up with the needle down and then just kind of wiggle the pool around your presser foot so that it's past it. Otherwise you'll end up with a hump where you sewed around your zipper pool and you do not want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this zipper on and be back. All right, I'm gonna head and sew that seam there. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to flip this 
over so now you can see my zipper here and I'm going to give this a nice press real quick and then you're just going to top stitch along your edge right here on top of your main fabric so I'm going to go ahead and press that and top stitch it and be back all right so you can see I have this top stitched and how nice my zipper looks on there now and so the next step is we're going to take our bottom pieces i have my main bottom and my lining bottom we're going to lay them wrong sides together so wrong sides so that our right sides are facing out on both pieces and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and baste all the way around here I'm basting the raw edges together just um i gotta trim that a little bit but to make sure that nothing shifts and just to make it a little bit easier. So um, that's just a recommendation, but highly recommend doing it. So then I'm just going to pretend, we're gonna pretend this is basted already so I don't have to go and come back, fold it in half, find the center point, and I'm gonna mark it. I'm gonna use a pin just because it's a little bit more accurate. We're gonna mark the side that is pointed, so not the straight side. We're gonna mark our center and then open it back up and turn it this way here like that. and then i'm going to also do the same thing here i'm going to fold this in half and find my center point and so this i highly recommend if you have pins use pins instead of clips because they are much more precise than a big chunky pin or a clip sorry so what we're going to do now is you are just going to take your bottom piece, line up your middles on top of each other. And I'm going to take out one pin and then add the pin in here. And then you're just going to continue to add this all the way around on both sides, all the way up to the top. So this is why you want to baste them together because... Um, you just want to make sure that all of your edges stayed lined up. You could baste this as well. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. It's only just going to make it a little bit easier on you if you do choose to do that. So you're going to pin this in place all the way around. And I did cut my pieces out before I pressed my fabric. So as you can see, these are turning out a little bit long. So I'm going to have to put my pattern pieces back on them and cut them out so that's your note if you haven't cut out your fabric yet make sure you press it before um, cutting it out so that it lays nice and flat but I was being lazy and didn't do that and then you can see as the result your pattern pieces are not the right sizes but we're just going to go with it for now and so then what you're going to do is you're just going to once you get all of these pinned together you're going to sew down and around and all the way up the top and it does say in the instructions if there's excess fabric to just trim it off at the zipper um, so I think that's just what I'm going to do but you're better off making sure that your pieces match correctly before doing it so I'm going to go ahead and sew this up and I will be back all right so I have this sewn on here, so I'm going to just trim off the extra here along my zipper line. And how I mentioned earlier that my zipper was too long, what I did is I just, I, you want to make sure it's zipped up when you do this. I zipped up my zipper, and then just as I finished the seam, I went over my zipper, back stitched it, and went forward um, three or four times, and then you just can trim off the edge of your zipper. You want to do this with your good sewing scissors. Um, and this is a metal zipper. So it's a little bit harder. Um, sometimes the metal zippers you have to like pull the teeth out and stuff. But um, you can do this with any zipper as well. You just have to go sew it up. And you just want to make sure you have a good strong needle in there. Um, I'm using a denim needle as I sew this just because this is going to be. A little bit thicker and make it easier to work with 
Um, well then I did forget to mention the other thing that we need is a double fold bias tape or you can make your own. Um, this is just what I have on hand so I'm just using white. Um, or you could, you can use a knit if you would like. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But what we're going to do is we're going to bind our raw edge here. I'm going to just cut off the edge of my zipper. Now, the instructions just have you just take this, wrap it on, pin it, and sew. But that's kind of wishing for a lot of luck to make sure that you're catching both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, you're going to open up your bias tape, and you can see how it's your store-bought. There's typically one side that is a little bit longer. So you can see here, this side is a little bit longer this way than this side of the fold. Um, and that's just so when you sew this down, it gives you a little bit more of a lip to catch. So what we're going to do is we're going to open it up. Now this was my shorter side. So I'm going to take my shorter side and I'm just going to line up this fold with my seam line that I know I'm going to stitch this and I'm just going to pin this all the way around and down so I'll go all the way around but I won't um, bore you with that and so once it's on and all the way around up to the top uh, you can trim it off and then what you're going to do is you're going to go over to your machine and you're going to sew with a straight stitch along this folded line all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, finish pinning, sew that, and then I will show you the next steps. All right, so I got this sewn on, and I will say one thing I did forget was um, when you sew this piece on, you want to make sure you get the tail of your zipper in there, the um, top part, I guess, of it, because this is going to go around onto the top. So you just want to make sure you um, sew that in there. And I did clip it too short, so I just sewed the piece back on. Um, but you can see here that this is all sewn in nicely. It's right in that fold. So what we're going to do is you're going to take this up and wrap it around. But as you can see, my seam allowance is kind of sticking out past there just a little bit which is nothing wrong with that but what it does is it just makes it a little bit harder to fold this over nicely so I'm gonna go ahead and just trim up my seam allowance and because it is thicker um, it makes that this side a little bit shorter because of um, the amount of space that it needs to go around to get pulled to the other side which then would make it not stitched together as nicely. So I'm just going to trim this up. And get all this out of the way. So now what you're going to do is you're going to, like I said, you're going to take it fold it and since this is already pre-made you have that fold in there fold it around and over the seam line don't pull it past the fold you want to just keep that fold nice and flat there and then just go around and pin it and at the curves you're gonna have to kind of fold that in just a little bit to get it to lay nicely Go all the way around, and then you're just going to top stitch this over here at one eighth of an inch or so seam allowance from the edge, and then your binding will be done on this piece. And it'll look nice and clean. Alright, so I have this sewn here, and I'll just show you. So on the back, can see here this is my stitching from here which means that I pulled it a little too tight and you can see here kind of the fold is coming over um, I'm not going to stress about it too much this is just for my daughter and it's just um, the inside so that's the other thing is 
Um, a lot of people worry a lot about the binding on this, but it's the inside and really nobody's going to see it. Um, so you can see here kind of around the curve, it just got pulled a little bit too tight, but like I said, it doesn't affect anything. Um, so when, here's the outside of my bag. It's looking cute. Um, so I'm going to push that over here. And then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take our top pieces, which are these kind of semi-circle looking pieces, and fold them in half. And on the rounded edge, we're going to find our middle point, just like we did here. And we're going to do the same thing with our lining. Find your middle point there. And then we're going to come over to our zipper, line it up here, find our middle point, and with the side with your main fabric, you're going to lay your main fabric on top of it, right sides together, pin the curved edge in there. And this is a little bit harder, make sure you don't go through your zipper. And then I'm going to take my lining fabric, line up the middle point there. So this is just like we did the zipper, we're just using a different piece now. So I'm going to add that pin in. And then we just kind of have to ease this curve, keeping our raw edges lined up with the edge of our zipper tape. Go all the way around it. It can be easier if you want to do one piece at a time and then add in the lining. So I'm just going to do the main piece here. And it's going to go all the way around to this connect to our bottom piece. And you just, the more pins you use, typically the better results you'll have. And it is going to end up pulling a little bit funny as you do this, um, just based on the shape of the pieces. And that's just part of it. So that and then I'm going to pin add this one into the pins there and then just like we did on this side of the zipper we are going to sew this edge with a zipper foot and then flip them over and top stitch so I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning and get that sewn and once you have that sewn you're just going to flip it out and I already did this and um, gave it a good press so then you're just going to go over it and top stitch all the way around your zipper here. All right, so I went ahead and I top stitched that. And you can see, so now our zipper is done and inserted. And one thing I did forget to mention, it doesn't say this in the instructions, but when you do this, um, when you sew the zipper on here, you wanna make sure that your binding is folded out away from the zipper. Otherwise, it's going to um, stick out right here, which isn't a huge issue, but it just looks a little bit nicer when it's, um, you can't see it when your zipper's open. I'm going to set that aside for now, and what we're going to do is we're going to take our webbing, and I am doing a kid size, so I have a 30-inch piece of webbing, and um, the instructions say cut a 6-inch piece of webbing from your strap. So that is from the total. So it says I need a 30 inch piece for the kids size. And so I'm going to cut six inches off of the 30 inches. So that will give me a six inch piece and a 24 inch piece. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that off. I'm going to take my six inch piece and I'm going to then get my buckle out, which I have not opened. And it doesn't matter which side, but you're going to pick a side and you're going to put it through like this. And I'm just going to clip this here for now. Right, so then we're going to take our side piece, one of our side pieces, and you're going to fold it in half so that it looks like this. But first, before I do that, I'm going to take this and just kind of set it inside and I'm going to fold this in half again and then I'm going to make sure that my webbing is hitting the top here it's being hugged by this fold and it says to 
have about one and a half inches of your webbing sticking out, which is probably about there. It's like one and a half inches. We need a little more. And then we're going to pin that in place like that and pin this other angled side on the bottom here. Once you have that pinned, you're going to take this over to your machine and sew down, pivoting here, pivot, and then there. So you're going to sew this whole piece together with the webbing in there in one stitch. Alright, so I have this sewn up now, and I did have to go over it twice because my machine was being wonky. But what you're going to do is we're going to just clip our corners. You do not, do not cut this off. Um, leave that on. I'm going to trim my seam allowance as well here while I do this. And then you want to just kind of pull this out and turn it. Get your corners nice. And then I'm going to give this a good press and then you just want to top stitch here and around. So basically top stitching where we um, just stitched. We got this piece top stitch you can see here and like I said we don't trim the webbing so it is still in there. Now we're going to take our other side piece and our longer piece of webbing and do kind of the same thing. We're going to put this in, leave about an inch and a half out, put this in half And then we're going to repeat those steps. We're just going to sew along here. So this is only one edge. We have the other edge down here. But we're just going to then go sew up this right here. Clip those seams. Flip it out. And top stitch it. So I'm going to just go ahead and do all of those steps and be back. Alright, so I went ahead and got this sewn and top stitched. This fabric is really fraying quite a bit. <laughs> um, so I have this piece here and this piece here. And so the next part is, is we're going to top stitch um, across on this piece. And that is to hold this in place, which is why we did not cut it off. So we're going to top stitch a little box around here and I'll show you how you can do it in what order to get um, a perfect looking box with a cross through it. All right, so here's my just quick drawing of our pieces. So we have this piece here and this piece here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start up here in this corner where you want your square to be. And you're going to stitch over to your top stitching here. And you're gonna pivot then, and you're going to come down diagonally this way to your corner here and then we're going to come back across to our top stitching stopping at your top stitching so this is one two three four this is your fourth point and then you're going to pivot and go back up to this point here so that's five again and then you're just going to come down here and your box is done what I would recommend is just kind of marking out your points that you want for your box. I'm going to do a one inch box on my pieces since my webbing is one inch. And that's about the right size, so one inch. So I'll mark out one inch, one inch, so that I can mark them. And then so for this piece, since it's facing the other way, we're going to do it a little bit differently. We're going to start out here at our point so wherever you're about one inch from your edge and you're going to go this way to your top stitching so this is our starting point to here and then you're going to come down across diagonally again to here then we're going to go across this way to our corner there and then back up to our starting point, that's your fifth point there, and then back down 
to here and finish. So that'll give you a really nice square with a cross to it. And since our top stitching is here, we're just using that as the outside of our box. And you can do all of that without having to lift your needle. So I'm going to go ahead and sew that on my pieces and be back. Alright, so I went ahead and I finished my little squares. Look how nice those look. You do want to back stitch where you start and end um, your stitching. Just a side note there. And so here's this piece. And I went ahead and just attached my buckles. These are different than the ones in the instructions. So the buckles are the same, but my glider is a little bit different. Um, so if you do buy the... This is what I got. Um, like I said, I got this from Joann's. But so I just, what I did is I went up through here and down. And so this is the right side of it. And then I slid it through my buckle um, coming from the back this way. And then I just take this tail end into here. This has three holes. Um, so I just take it into there and then back over into here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this end here and fold it over twice and just sew it down like that. And then I can adjust my buffle as needed. So. Um, if you do buy these, that's kind of how they work. It is different than what is in the tutorial because they use a different um, type of glider here. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to come back to our bag. And we are going to take our pieces here. You want the folded edge up at the top. And you're going to line it up with the top of your bottom piece which is this piece that loops all the way around and pin it to the side raw edges together and you're going to do the same thing with this piece here you want to make sure when you're attaching it I think this is the right way that they're on the right sides so that um, your buckles are facing the right way, so once it's sewn, so you can see here, once I open it, you can see this buckle is going to be on the back, and this is supposed to go on the front. So that means I need to take these off and switch their sides. It just kind of depends what side you put your buckle on and um, how you did it, but do double check before sewing it on. So, so now see I take this out and I, this is how it's going to go lay to my pattern piece and my buckle is the right way. This one doesn't really matter as much um, as long as your buckle buckles the same both ways as mine does. So I'm just going to line these up and I'm going to then just go over and sew these tabs down. So once you have those sewn on, what we're going to do is we're just going to tuck these in to our bag. And you can really just baste them if you want to because we're going to go over it again. Um, and I'm just going to wait till the end to sew my tag because I'm going to use black thread and I don't have that set up right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our back piece. I went ahead and basted my um, main to my lining wrong sides together. I just went ahead and did that already. And what we're going to do is just like we've done before, fold it in half. We're going to find the center points. This time we're going to find it in the top and the bottom piece, or top and bottom of the piece, sorry. There. And then we're going to find our center points on the bottom of our bag. Here, and we're getting very close to finishing this up. And then we're going to find the center of our top piece. And then just like we did before, again, we're going to keep these out of the way. And we're going to, so the curved part of the back is the bottom. So we're going to line up our pins. And this does get a little tricky 
just because we are kind of working in kind of in a bowl form. So then what we're gonna do is we're just going to go around matching up all of our raw edges. And if you have extra pieces, that's okay. I'm just gonna pin this all the way around. Once we get that pinned, we're gonna go ahead and sew all the way around. And you might have to kind of put it through your machine and stand it up. I will show you guys um, a video of me sewing this so, so you can kind of see um, a technique that I use to get it through my machine. All right, so what I'm gonna do, you can see here how I have it pinned. It kind of is like sitting down in a bowl. I am going to be stitching on the side of the back, so not up around here. Yeah, I'm just gonna start up at the top middle at this pin. You can kind of you can start wherever you want, but that's just where I'm gonna start. And you just kind of want to make sure it's out of the way. corners especially like here we need to stand it up and you might just have to readjust a couple times easy or hard this is is kind of going to depend one on the size you're doing as well as the material you're using so this is a pretty flimsy material but if you're using like a heavy canvas it might stand up here a little bit more as you're doing this doing this all the way around till we are back at the beginning. Right, and once it's sewn, it is going to look like this. Um, I might have to go in after once I birth it and um, take out some of my basting stitches on this on my pieces. But other than that, um, one thing I did, I forgot, and I'm going to mention it now so that you don't do the same thing is to when you do this leave your zipper open a little bit unless you can I, I mean I got mine but it was not easy I really had to fight it because I had this zipped all the way so it is zip closed with the zipper on the outside and it just is really hard to get it open but what you might want to do is just kind of flip it out just to double check that you got all of your seams caught in there and that everything looks good before um, moving on to the final step which is binding and we're basically going to do the same thing I'm going to go ahead and trim this up um, before adding the binding because I already know one it's just really messy and fraying everywhere and it's just kind of uneven so I'm going to go ahead and trim this up real quick all right, I went ahead and trimmed my edges, and I could go ahead and give my table a little vacuum to clean it up. Um, if you don't have one of these, this is awesome handheld vacuum wireless. Just does the trick. I will put a link um, to it. It's just off of Amazon. But the last step we're going to do now is we are going to bind our edges. And so we are going to do just like we did um, with this piece. The only difference really is that this is in the round. Um, and I'm going to use the same method I used before. So I'm going to find my short side there and I'm going to line that up. I'm going to leave my um, seam. I'm going to start at the bottom um, just so that it's a little bit more hidden and that it's not as noticeable because that's where we're going to have to attach our seams. So I'm going to leave about an inch and a half from the middle and that's where I'm going to start my stitching so this part is not going to get sewn down yet. Um, I'm just going to go around and pin this on 
just like we did basically how we were putting the back on. We're going to put this on, again, lining up this fold here to our stitching line that we made. We're going to do it all the way around. Just keep on going. And with these corners, you just want to make sure you get it nice and tight. Your, the more pins or clips you use, the more likely your finished product is going to be what you hope it will be. So I'll just hold it in place much better. So I'm going to come around this curve here and I'm going to cut off here just so I have about an inch and a half extra. So I'll start sewing on this side of this clip and then um, end about here and I'll show you how I'm going to attach my Binding. So I will take you over to my machine and so show you um, the process of sewing this binding on as well. So as I mentioned, I'm going to start here on this side of my clip. And you want to make sure you're getting everything out of the way. And put that down. And so this is just, like, like I said, very much like sewing the back on. Um, if you have a really sturdy fabric, again... You might be sewing with your bag kind of more stood up, but mine is pretty floppy. And so with that, you want to make sure you're pushing your binding from your front piece out of the way. I'm just going to start there. So you're going to want to just keep adjusting and shifting it when you adjust adjust it or do any pulling on it. You want to make sure your needle is down because otherwise it's going to cause too much shifting. Right. So since we're just at my machine, I finished sewing this edge on and since I already trimmed it, I don't need to do that. But what we're going to do for the binding, there's multiple ways you can do this. I'm going to do it the most basic way. Um, the best way to do it is if you actually measure it and do it at an angle so that it's at a diagonal. But since this isn't inside of a bag, I'm not going to do that. But what you're going to do is you just kind of want to take it and put them together and find that point where they meet and open it up all the way, matching up your folds. And then we're just going to stitch right across, oops, sorry, stitch right across here, and then we will trim this down. So you want it so that it lays flat um, once they are sewn together. I'm just going to then take it, line them up. This part can be kind of tricky just because the less of a hole you leave here, the more challenging it is because you have less room to work with. So once you get it lined up, get them on there and stitch straight across. cut it you just want to kind of pull it and make sure you have the right length because once you cut it and if it's too short you're going to be in trouble so I'm just going to trim it and then I will finish sewing this piece down here Close 
fill that gap. And then just like we did on the other side, we're going to fold this back and then again, just fold this over and clip it down and then top stitch that. And then we are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this and then I will show you guys a little bit of the top stitching and then it'll be done. All right, so I have it all pinned down. So now we're just going to top stitch this down right on the edge. And this is basically the same process that we've done three times now, just sewing all the way around this back piece. All right, so once you have applied your binding, it is all sewn down. You can see here, it's all on there. And what you're gonna do is you're just going to flip your bag. This is, if you are new to bag making, it is actually called birthing your bag. That's just what it's called when you flip your bag right side out when it is done. And look how cute this looks. You can zip it up. We have the zipper there and open it up and the binding all inside the nice finishes and our buckle and it is so cute this turned out so well i'm gonna have to make myself one and i really hope that you found this video helpful and that you sew up your own bum bag and love it if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment down below you can also find me on Instagram, it's at Sobex, I will link it in the description below. And you can follow me there and reach out to me there as well with sewing questions, suggestions for tutorials, um, or just to follow along on my sewing journey. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for future videos. And thanks for watching! Bye.